I think this was the first time we saw Darian Barner in live reps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your impressions of him and what he can add to this group? Yeah, I think um, I don't want to, I won't get so caught up in like what he can add. Um, more so than I want, more than I want to say like I'm happy just to see the kid back out there. The human element of it, right? Working his butt off, working his tail off. Working to get back, having a little bit of a setback, and then finally getting back out there and making things happen. I think I'm just excited for that dude to uh, to be able to be back out there. Um, obviously, with the competition to cap, we got to see what what he can do. Yeah, I got three reps of him, four reps of him, you know. So I don't know. I genuinely don't. But I'm hoping that he can be uh, as good as he was at Temple. You know, bring the production that he brought from Temple, and got to see what happens from there. We've seen the numbers that he posted at Temple, so you can read that off the stat sheet, but what did he do at Temple that you guys like? Well, it's this explosion, right? Like, it's his ability to be able to get off the rock, obviously turn the corner, bend the corner. We've seen some, I've seen some of that today in pass rush. Right? He has a natural feel for rushing the passer. Um, not saying that, like, yeah, he's solely here to rush the passer, but he has a natural feel for it, um, which... I was excited to get a little taste of today, right? And then he has the ability to, to carry the weight, to play the way that we need him to play here. So I think that's pretty good. Before he got hurt, what did you see out of Jamal Howard? And, and do you think he could help you if he's Oh, uh, he's healthy? a baby, man. Okay. Man, he's a baby, you know. My high school coach has a rule, like, he doesn't – he doesn't talk about freshmen because they're improving. He doesn't talk about sophomores because they're improving. Like, he's got that rule, and I kind of adopted that old school way. Like, he's a baby. If he helps, he helps. If he doesn't, he's a baby, you know. We got room to go. But he's got a good, you know, we went after him hard for a reason. I'll say that without tipping my hat too much. Luke mentioned the other day he wanted to play as many as eight defensive linemen. Mm -hmm. What kind of conversations have you had with, with this group and how, in terms of competition for that many spots? And how do you figure out how to use that many players potentially? You know, I love that question because it gives me an opportunity to brag on the guys in the room and the character that they have. Um, we've talked extensively about our roles and our opportunities and what it means for us to win and succeed as a team. Um, I've shared with these guys um, multiple examples of people um, who had to do what it took to win, whatever that may be. And so, um, obviously rolling eight guys, maybe more if you could. In New York, we dressed 11 one game, I believe, when I was with the Jets. Um, to have that as a D-line coach is exciting, but um, it obviously takes away a little bit from the rep count. These guys have not batted an eye when it comes to the rotation and how we're doing things and understanding what it's going to take. Coach has said it to them. It is not a secret, right? Like he has said it to them that we want to be able to roll guys in, keep guys fresh, and be able to wear people down by the end of the game. And uh, and the beauty of the guys in my room is that I have, it hasn't been met with pushback. It hasn't been met with guys leaning towards kind of the selfish part of the spectrum but more so with guys saying they'll do whatever it takes. Um, and I've tried to instill in them that whether it's one play or a hundred plays, everybody in this room matters. Everybody in this room has value. Everybody in this room contributes to this team in some way. Um, and thankfully those guys have bought in and it's made it a little easy. Going off of that, this past rush loses two guys that went to the league. Um, what's your message to this group of, hey, play the same way that they did, but at the same point, it's not about replicating their numbers. Yeah, I think, I'm trying to make everybody on our defensive line individuals, right? They'll never be Keanu. They'll never be Nick. They'll never be any of the great uh, defensive linemen that came through here. So I'm trying to find the unique niche of every, uh, every, every single guy in our room. Um, I have told them that it's not just those guys are not trying to replace those numbers, but understanding um, how to rush the passer, um, how we work together as rushers, and then letting the numbers speak for themselves. Because if I solely went off of the numbers for these guys, man, it makes it difficult for them to believe that they're having success. And we all know that's not true, right? And so um, I've just told those guys, I've tried to coach those guys up to be confident in their ability, um, use what I know to make them better pass rushers, right? And, uh, and hopefully be able to go out there and make some things shake. Um, just so the world knows, it is no secret. Like I want us to be better on third down and I want it to start in my room. Okay, so for all the, um, GAs that are going to go watch our press conferences and go tell their coaches, you can tell them, I'm going to rush the passer. It ain't no doubt about it. I ain't saying we're going to be great. I don't know that. But my number one goal is to make these guys better pass rushers, and I think we're doing that.
We've seen Isaiah Mullins play a little bit more inside, especially in the dollar package. What is it about him outside of size? Obviously, a big dude, but but he, what are the skills he has that makes him able to move along the interior like that? Yeah, I think you can't discount the size because I think that's one of the things that you can't coach, man. You know what I mean? He's big, he's strong, he can keep nice square pads. Like we got to work on his footwork a little bit, um, but. We feel like in order for us to be successful, what helps us be successful is a guy who's stout in the pocket, immovable, that can have knockback, right? Good long length, right? To be able to create separation at the point of attack, uh, which is what I believe you need, right? From a defensive front, whether I'm playing here at the University of Wisconsin or whether I'm playing for the Seattle Seahawks, right? I think it's important to have that up front. Um, when you have the intangibles that he has, uh, you have to find a way. It's our job as coaches to maximize it and utilize it. And we feel like the positions that we put him in maximize and utilize that, you know.